What is up you guys? My name is Marcellus and today this is going to be my first official Toriko review. Um, this is chapter 255 and this chapter pretty much releases or you know shows the aftermath of Ichiryu and Midoriya's fight um, and we find out that Ichiryu is actually not dead uh, and watching um, the only person in Toriko reviews I watch which is Saiyan Z3 go check him out for some really good Toriko reviews. Um, he actually said that this would make uh, this incident right here, you know, kind of messed up the writing or, well, get questionable writing of Toriko. And I would really agree with this. It's dependent on the future of Ichiryu and what he does. Um, if he's just, you know, there to be there, I believe this this would have been a bad decision because, like Saiyan Z3 said, it was a perfect opportunity to kill Ichiryu off and give us emotions. But also on another note, it made Midra, Midra seem like, you know, he wasn't as evil as we made him out to be. And he actually still held some emotions from when they were younger and they were all cared for each other immensely. So um, when this happens, I, one thing I really do want to think about is, I, I wonder what Jero is going to think about this when, you know, eventually he hears about it or learns about it or if he doesn't know what's happening already. Because... It's no signs that Jiro knows that Ichiryu and Midoriya is fighting up there, and uh, it, that Midoriya could accidentally killed or you know killed Ichiryu. So I wonder what Jiro is gonna think about this when he hears about it or finds out. Um, what happens next is that you know a lot of talking is going on between Ichiryu and Midoriya, and he's saying you know Midoriya basically says you know uh, I could have killed you, but you know you know what's you're not even worth killing anymore. And, you know, I really think that Ichiryu shouldn't have been talking because he was bleeding down his head. Part of his, his skull was missing. He's bleeding down out of that huge hole in his stomach. So, um, Midoriya basically says that, you know, those humans down there are about to be killed by my meteor spice. And then we uh, showed that the meteor spice is raining down to earth. And I believe Chief Mansum and, uh, uh, gathers a, a group of giraffe beasts or something like that. And they begin to shoot back at uh the meteor spice and my only problem with that is that I don't think that you know giraffe beasts or I don't know if they're from the gourmet world or the fucking human world if they're from the human world I don't think they should be able to fight back against the meteor spice I think there should have been a, a lot more struggle with the animals than what was shown um then we have fucking Setsu she stops the meteor spice which is eh, okay she struggles with it it shows that she struggles with it and then Jiro stopped the meteor spice with uh you know with no struggle at all, and I understand that because he's one of the three disciples, so I, I I really understand that. But uh yeah, while that's happening, we flash back over to Ichiryu saying that we need to team up uh one more time, and not we as you know the three disciples, but I think they're talking about I guess they need to guide the three disciples or you know at least team them team up one more time and then let the three uh, the younger generation finish them off. But they, he says that there's a bigger uh, opponent or enemy at hand. And I think he needed to be talking about Joa, Fake Froze, or, you know, like saying Z3 said, the, the, the beast that eats suns. So, I really think, I'm really thinking right now at this point in time we're talking about Joa. Because Joa is shown to be, like, a, a very, very strong opponent. And from what... Saiyan Z3 and me had a conversation about uh, with Joa being the king of nitros and being from a whole different planet, in my opinion. Uh, I really do think that the current main villain right now is Joa, to focus on him and stop him. So, uh, yeah. And another thing. Uh, I I'm going to get into the, make a, a longer video about this later. But if you don't think Joa is a huge, you know, a huge, like, if you take into consideration that Joa is the king of nitros, if you don't think that Joa is a huge threat, just remember in the flashback where, um, I could say, I don't know how to say his name, um, you know, the dude with the god, uh, the full course menu with god, I, I, could, I keep saying with his name wrong, um, but if you don't think he's, uh, Joa's a threat, just think about the time that all those blue nitros came to Arcas, Arx, fuck, Arcasia's door, Arcasia's door, and, he basically said, you know, nobody trying to fight them. This is back when I would say Jerome and uh, Ichiryu was at his peak. He said nobody tried to fight them. 
you know, I have to go with them anyways. And they took them away for a while. So, if Arcasia and Ichiryu and Jiro at their peak were not willing to fight them, and we have the king of Nitros right here, I really do think this is a huge threat. Then we kind of panel over to um, Ze Zebra and Sani waking up. And, you know, Sani's still able to move. And Zebra's able to break out the binding from uh, Tepi. And, you know, we see all these different things going on. And Zebra's like, wake up, kid. Um, and I really think he was talking to Komatsu because he's out, of, he's out of the range of... I don't think... We didn't even see the horse in this arc, I don't think. So, I, I really do think he's out the range of that big horse that he's riding. I think he's talking to um, Komatsu because Komatsu's unconscious. And uh, he calls Komatsu kid on a regular basis. So, I think he's talking to Komatsu. And after he says that, Komatsu mummers, you know, Toriko's name. And that's basically the end of the chapter where we see Toriko waking up. So, what did I think about the chapter? I liked it. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Ichiryu still being alive. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. Mitra being, uh, still having compassion for his fellow brother, um, I, I still don't know how I feel about that either, you know, I feel like Mitra, Mitra, I felt that Stardom was, was on the verge of being good, I never thought that Stardom was a very, very evil person, when I first seen Stardom, when we seen him in that little cafe on the lake or whatever, and Toriko and him, you know, basically broke the place in half with all their, you know, tension, I, I knew that Stardom was an evil person back then. Uh, but now I know Sargent isn't an evil person for real. Uh, I don't think that Sargent will become a final villain. I don't think Sargent will be, you know, a killer. I think Sargent will actually be in the middle or either on the good side. So, you know, I'm really not sure how I feel about Mitra. Um, I believe that the villain that they should be worried about right now is fake Joa. I mean, with Joa slash fake Froze. And another thing that we have to take into consideration is that when, uh, Mitra was talking about, um, I mean, Ichiryu, was talking about it. Each of you mentioned his full course menu, and there had to be a cook out there that can, uh, you know, cook it. And I believe that's Komatsu. Um, there's nobody that's shown right now that can, you know, possibly cook it. Uh, and I believe you also mentioned that Arcasia took this into consideration when the meteor slice is coming down. So I believe that, you know, I know it was um, it was Fake Froze that mentioned that uh, Arcasia would take in took into consideration that the meteor sites will eventually fall to Earth one day. So, I don't know how he knew that would happen. Um, I have no idea. I'm still getting in the, to the field of Toriko. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below what you thought about 255. Like it if you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys.